thank you everyone for attending and specific thanks for CR Labs to holding this event so that we can talk about the journey of Cockroach DB in Netflix. Uh, so my name is Shen Wei. Uh, before I'm talking about uh, how I build and release and deploy and managing and deal with the fun stuff with Cockroach DB, I'll hand over to Shahar. Everyone, I'm Shahar. Um, so we're going to be talking about um, our journey with Cockroach DB, and I'll start with um, kind of setting the context and the history. So we're um, at the point of how we decided to use Cockroach DB. Okay. Okay. Great. So um, the nice thing about working at Netflix is I don't have to explain what we do. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but many years ago, Netflix was a DVD by mail service. Um, we quickly uh, changed to uh, or pivoted to a streaming service, and at that point, um, we had to care a lot about. Um, resiliency, availability, and latency uh, in order to make the customer experience really good. So um, back in 2008, we were still an on-premise data center running um, Netflix, the streaming service, and uh, there was a major issue that caused a very long outage, and at that point, it was decided, okay, we're going to make a risky decision at that time and migrate to the public cloud at AWS. Um, so in 2010, we started that migration. And very quickly, um, well, maybe not quickly, but eventually we got onto AWS. And um, uh, at the time, we were using an Oracle database. And we were realizing that we needed to expand to new regions, um, dealing with uh, replication for many customers across the world. We decided to adopt Cassandra and quickly became a sort of a Cassandra shop. Um, uh, we used a data everywhere uh, strategy which, um, for those of you familiar with Cassandra, basically having a ring in every, in, in three regions across the globe and asynchronously replicating the data everywhere so that um, there's basically a, rep, a copy of the data in all of our regions. Um, so fast forward to uh, 2019, really like late 2018, um, Cassandra is still kind of the only uh, solution at Netflix. Um, we were on AWS, so we had the AWS services for databases as well, but um, we were really only providing Cassandra as a managed solution. Okay. Great. So um, that was a problem for some use cases. Um, at that time, uh, Netflix use cases for databases were also growing very rapidly. We were, in 2016, we started pr producing our own movies there's a whole side of the business that was developing, as a studio side of the business, um, which was contributing to that. So some of these use cases, um, for example, were a cloud drive service, which is like a file system-like service for uh, media assets, which was needed by the studio side of the business. Content delivery, um, Netflix built its own CDN called OpenConnect, and uh, we need a, a control plane service to manage uh, network devices around the world. Um, and also Spinnaker, which is our kind of uh, continuous delivery platform on the cloud. Um, these services were using, um, were, they're, they're global services and needed to have um, at times consistent transactions. And that was problematic with Cassandra because um, in Cassandra you don't have rich transactions, you have lightweight transactions which are very limited. Um, and uh, the secondary indices in Cassandra are very, very, finicky and in most cases don't work. Um, the other option we had was AWS Aurora, which being on AWS was available to us, but we had some limitations with scalability there. So let me get into that. So um, we were deciding, okay, we need a scalable um, SQL database um, because of these use cases. Um, and these are the main things that we considered. So uh, number one, do you have a multi-active topology? Um, meaning we can access any database server across the globe um, with a read or a write. Um, so CockroachDB has that um, via the, uh, you know, the kind of every node is a coordinator node in CockroachDB, which is very helpful. 
whereas in AWS Aurora, we didn't, we didn't have that at the time. Um, secondary indices are consistent in CockroachDB um, and uh, sort of like can be drop-in replacement with like Postgres indices with some limitations, of course. Um, global, global transactions um, and, of course, uh, CockroachDB's SQL. Another big part of choosing CockroachDB as well for us was that it's an open source project and we were able to deploy our own um, uh, build of CockroachDB with, uh, with the enterprise license, of course, which, because we used a lot of the enterprise features, but we wanted to be able to have full visibility and full control of the system. Um, so that was, a, that was a huge plus for us to choose CockroachDB as well. Um, okay, with that, I'm going to hand it over to Shengwei. Yeah, thank you, Shaha. And Shaha and his team, they are doing a credit job just to handle, deal with all the customer questions so that I can save some time for myself to actually deal with the CockroachDB itself. So uh, just do a quick, quick snapshot. Um, uh, since 2022, we deployed the first cluster in prod, and then till now we have 100 prod cluster and also 150 plus testing class, including all the perf performance testing and every, everything they want to use. So yeah, I guess there's also a question coming from many of guys like what is the topology and what's a, what's a typical use case in Netflix? So currently most clusters, they are still using a single region. A single region is kind of good enough for them. Um, we use three AZ, three availability zone. Um, some, some of the customers, they already uh, deploy the cluster into the multi-region topology, but it's still in a very early stage. Yes, it can run for sure, but to make sure we get the best performance, we have to tune in a little bit and to getting the best advice for everyone. Um, so the biggest cluster for now is a single region cluster, which has a 60 node cluster, and then um, we have a 26 terabyte, um, yeah. That can be one of our largest customer. Um, so also a kind of frequent asked question is, how does Netflix maintain the cockroach DB? So uh, in short, we maintain a fork for the, we are not using the binary. I'm not saying the binary is bad, <laughs> but the, the point is there are some customization we need to do. The reason that people ask why, the reason is firstly Netflix, we internally, we have a lot of infrastructure. We have to do many integration with ourselves, like authentication and also the logging system. We definitely want to have trigger some alarm. We already have some, uh, we have some stunning colleague already built great platform to uh, do the alarming and we want to use them. So we have to do integration. Um, CDC uh, is also part of that. I think tomorrow there will be another talk about data movement. So I'll handle this, this problem to my colleague tomorrow. Yeah, so um, yes, we can achieve that, and this integration is fun, but um, building is a hands-on process. I have to do the manual build, the manual release. The, I do the code change, I do the testing, I need to make sure our building environment is correct, thanks to the container technology. So it might be easier for me to build a uh, Docker image, everything, but still you need to be careful when, whenever you make some change. Um, the current version strategy is we are not doing very aggressively try to keep, catch up with other uh, version upgrade. Typically, we will wait. Uh, I know there are, there are a lot of um, fancy features whenever there's a new release, thanks to CLF. <laughs> um, the problem is we want to be a little bit conservative while we are trying to, because we are talking about 100 pro clusters, so I need to be a little bit uh, careful when I, when I release. So, Typically, there will be a couple months delay unless there's a, some um, important customer that keeps saying, hey, we really need this feature. Could you please build that? For sure, we can do everything, right? Um, and usually, five, we wait for a five minor release. And, but if we, are, if we already do a major release, and then there's a, some minor release that has a patch, some bug fixing or some improvement we want to have, we just immediately to do that. And then how do we deploy and manage our cluster? Um, so we are using AWS EC2 instance. I, uh, yeah, this typical infrastructure uh, utilizing uh, across the entire Netflix. Um, we use Jenkins build. Of course, I, I, I was trying to put some pipeline um, diagram, but I know 
probably everyone knows what is pipeline, so I'll just talk about that. Yeah, we use Jenkins build, and internally, uh, I think uh, Spinnaker is also, Spinnaker delivery is also kind of well known by Netflix is using that to actually deploy everything. Um, so that's about the deployment, and internally, definitely managing about 100 cluster is definitely cannot do a manual things. So we have a control plan to do all these things. The control plan is not only for the cockroach DB, but also, also is kind of common infrastructure for many of data solutions within Netflix, like, you know, Cassandra, right? <laughs> we are sharing the same control panel, although there will be some customization. Um, yeah, and of course we cannot, um, automation is a very big part, and actually is one of my uh, most important job uh, in Netflix, try to build automation script, Whenever there's some, uh, I would say, if we want to do some operation, we definitely want to have some automation on top of that. And whenever some incident happen or some alarm triggered, it will be easier if we, ha we have some auto capture and auto mitigation to just solve the problem. So, so me or my team, we don't have to get paged. We don't have to wake up during the midnight. So everyone has that experience, I guess. Um, yes. Cockroach DB is good, it's fancy. I mean, I'm not trying to, trying to criticize anything, but I just talk about some problem we've been facing. I'm pretty sure, uh, and I think CR Labs are already aware of many of things, and this is more like improvement in the future. So firstly, the data range are available. Uh, I think this is also a question coming from many guys. Uh, do you see any outage? Do you have any problem with the cockroach? Of course. It's a, it's a production database. Of course we will have some problem, but we, but we just need to deal with that. So one of the issues we've been seeing is about transient instability. Cockroach is resilient, pretty, pretty available. I think that's the name of the cockroach, right? Um, so, but sometimes when the client traffic is too high, we do see some transient data unavailable issue. Um, I know uh, when we talk about data unavailable issue, everyone is like, my database is screwed but actually it's a transient, so it's getting auto-recovered in some bit. Um, we still, in a process of investigation, try to understand why it's happening at, at the beginning, although it's not causing a big trouble for customers. It's, you know, some, a little one or two uh, range unavailable may not causing some big customer impact, but still, underlying, we want to understand what's really happening. The second problem is about when, when, we, when there's a no, not transient, uh, data available. Uh, the data is just unavailable. How do we fix it? Um, the current technology is we have to bring down the entire cluster and do the offline repairing and then bring back the cluster. Well, it, it fixed problem for sure, but in some sense it may not be tolerable for us to, um, to sustain this kind of downtime. Although, uh, we want to definitely do some preventative things at the beginning, like increasing the replica factor or using other mechanism, but also time to recover is another matrix we want to evaluate while we are using this database. Um, another problem we've been seeing is some metric discrepancy. I'm just using some example, uh, probably the only example. We do see some transaction latency and statement transaction there's a discrepancy, which creates some confusion uh, on one of our customer. Um, also, uh, another imp then, then we can talk about improvement. Um, using EBS, uh, the elastic block sto storage, um, I, think, I think this is one of the things we want to do so, so that some customers they may be disk sensitive so we can easily expand that without, without adding more nodes. Uh, fully secure mode, yeah. Currently, Netflix is still running, uh, Cockroach, still in a secure mode. Uh, well, still in a secure way, Client, they are, they are using a secure connection talking to the cluster. But within cluster, the node communication is still in unsecure mode. It's not because we cannot do that. It's more like we don't have the automation and every integration ready for that thing. But I think we are building that. Um, yeah, one more thing about critical business uh, case support. Um, it's already uh, well used and it's a popular database across Netflix. But the problem is we don't, we don't have enough experience and we don't have, uh, we don't have uh, many things ready to move to a more critical path. A reason being um, some example. Uh, for Cassandra, it's easy to come up with the SLOs, like write latency or read latency, you can just put that. But for 
uh, for SQL-based database. Um, you cannot just set a latency blindly. Everyone, they can write some giant that you don't know what's, what's really going on with these queries, but it's taking a long time. You don't want to get paged, you don't want to get wake up during midnight because the customer, they're writing some um, weird query. But the problem is, um, but that doesn't mean we cannot solve the problem or we, we actually need to solve this problem so we can bring that into critical parts. How can we make sure we find the, the, the right metrics, the low level metrics, without talking about the blindly talk about latency, everything? Um, so this is a, also aligned with how we deal with the time to recover, how can we visualize, measure all these metrics, latency, performance, everything, and bring it to, for our customers so, so they can choose between Cockroach TV, Cassandra, and other solutions. So this is something we need to, as a future work. Yeah, uh, then backup restore. We are using some, um, we are using some um, separate application to do backups or to do backup and to do restore. Um, historically, um, CR, I think CRDB, they also have some different version. They, ha they are evolving. Now the modern feature of back backup is, um, is more fancy. But by the time we firstly explore that, maybe it's not that mature enough. So we have our own application. So we can take the customer schedule configuration and then we we just maintain our own application and do all the backup. And oh, of course, the restore is also um, just using the, using the uh, typical setting. Uh, that's one interesting case I want to talk about, the pro to test. Uh, the many customers, they have a pro data, but they also want to try out something with that test data. So we, have, we provide two ways to do this uh, backup and restore. So we just, we, first, we can have, in one way, we can have one testing cluster and keeping pulling the prod data and do the restore. This is one way, we call in place restore. Another way is instead of like wiping up all the data and then restore it, we create another cluster and we restore the data into another cluster. So then after we're doing that, the only thing we need to do is just like sweeping the, the DNS, uh, changing, routing the traffic to the new cluster so that we can, we can have a zero downtime uh, this thing, so it's, it's widely used. It's, uh, I would say it's most frequently used for our customer. Yep, I think that's all. Um, for Q&A, definitely you can grab me and Shahar <laughs> during all this break or everything. Uh, we will be there. And thanks CLAPS again for hosting all this event. Oh, thank you. Hold up guys, I, I actually, I wanted to ask you one question, right? So yeah. you guys are basically hosting CockroachDB as a service, like internal platform, right? Um, how many questions are you getting around the database from the consumers and the developers, right? How much is that keeping you awake and how much time are you spending there? Yeah, I can take that. Um, so You're like, oh yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, uh, Shahar is dealing a lot with customer dear conversation yeah. these. Um, I think that uh, we see a lot of the same issues that you know, uh, the folks from JP Morgan from the last talk I was mentioning, um, they, you know, the database is an SQL database. It's Postgres wire compatible. So a lot of people think it's a drop in replacement, but it's, yeah. um, they get surprises, especially when they go multi-region. Um, so uh, that and uh, as well as the, um, uh, some of the uh, additional capabilities like follower yeah. reads and data placement, um, we get a lot of questions about that, but um, the nature of uh, databases at Netflix before CockroachDB was a lot of Cassandra usage, so folks are a little bit more um, kind of in tune with the distributed systems concepts and like eventual consistency, so um, I think that helps. Yeah. I always joked, I think you need a PhD in Cassandra to actually make it work really well, right? Like it's super, super complex. So. That's, that's why we have to hire a bunch of uh, Apache committers. Exactly. We do have. <laughs> That's right. I think you guys are the largest committers to the Cassandra project, I think. Right? Apple, so, too. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, between the two of you. So, Well, cool, guys. Thank you so much for doing this. Uh, really, really appreciate it. So, Thank you. And I'll see you uh, in lunch in about an hour. Thanks, guys. <laughs>